Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Let's review the anatomy on these mandibular incisors. Review our morphology and terminology and some of our identifying characteristics. Here we have a central and lat lateral mandibular incisors, and they're actually in a section of alveolar bone where they're removed in section. This gives us a little bit of an advantage in so much as we compare, can compare one of the incisors with the other in relation to size and shape and know that the, they're from the same mouth. This is our central here, which is our more bilaterally symmetrical tooth. It's more fan-shaped and more evenly symmetrical. Our incisal angles are the same on both mesial and distal and are almost a 90 degree angle. In our lateral here now, we have our distal incisal angle, which is considerably more rounded than our mesial incisal angle. Our lateral also has a little bit more of a broader mesial distal dimension, about a half millimeter wider and our contact on the distal surface starts to get a little closer to the cervical because of the rounding that exists on it. Actually our crown length from the incisal to the cervical is about a half millimeter longer on the lateral incisor also. If we look to some of our anatomy on the labial surface we find that we have our height of contour on the cervical third of the tooth as we did our uh, maxillaries and same exists on the lingual, it's down in the cingulum and our cingulum is not quite as prominent in our mandibular incisors as it is in the maxillary. On our central we have this flattened area on the incisal two-thirds of our labial surface whereas in our lateral this is a little bit rounded and it doesn't flatten out quite as much as it does uh, in the central. Some of our other characteristics that uh, are prominent on these mandibulars is are on the lingual surface. We've got very small marginal ridges on the lingual surface. These are just not prominent. The lingual surface is almost flat in relation to the marginal ridges and in relation to our uh, lingual fossa. We don't have lingual pits on these mandibular incisors. We've got one specifically new term and characteristic on these teeth and that is our proximal root concavity. Teeth are quite broad from the labial to the lingual. The fact is the overall uh, width of the tooth labially lingually is wider than it is mesially distally. So we end up with a very broad, flat uh, root which gives rise to this concavity. This can be called a uh, concavity, a depression, or a groove. And generally it'll be called a proximal root cavity or proximal root depression. It's got a variety of terms that we can use in that area. If we look at the incisal aspect of it, we're not going to be able to get a, a good uh, relationship to our incisal here because our teeth are a little bit out of a line. But we find that in the central, our incisal, let me check here, that's our central. Yep, our incisal is a little bit more bilaterally symmetrical and our cingulum is located in the center. And this leaves for the cingulum to be in an perpendicular to an axis from the labial to the lingual. And it makes this tooth very squarely symmetrical as far as the uh, uh, labial, lingual, and cingulum is concerned, and incisal edge. Now on our lateral, we're starting to turn the corner of the arch, and this will have a tendency to twist on the labial lingual axis uh, towards the lingual on the distal surface here, or distal aspect of the incisal here. And it also will give our cingulum a little bit of an opportunity to swing towards the distal. And this is a fairly prominent characteristic. Uh, 
One other characteristic we should review, and that is our, get some of this red off here, our line angles. We indicated that the line angles on the central were relatively symmetrical and square. Our line angle on the mesial of the mesial labial line angle on the lateral is fairly uh, sharp and similar to our central. And the same on the distal, except down in the distal lab distal labial one-third of the cervical. This starts to round rather significantly, and our line angle is not sharp on the distal labial one-third. And this is a characteristic specifically of our lateral. One thing we'd like to have you do with these teeth is to start to feel with our explorer, our dental cow horn explorer. We like to get a, a pencil grasp and a fulcrum on these uh, explorers and, and feel this cervical line or the junction between our enamel and cementum. A very important part of the tooth. Spend many, many hours clinically uh, identifying, working, repairing, uh, scaling this junction and most of the time it is subgingival. We don't get an opportunity to see it. But if we can feel how this uh, junction occurs, and it varies from tooth to tooth. I think it will be very helpful when you go to the mouth and start to uh, work with this junction when it's subgingival and you have no uh, sight or vision on it. Let's review with some drawings here of our mandibular incisors. If we were to look at our mandibular central, there are certain criteria that we would expect to see, have you identify in your drawings, even though you may not be a, an artist, as I'm not. We'd like a rather evenly symmetrical fan-shaped crown on our central and a root that is basically directly underneath our crown. We would expect our incisal angles to be about equal sharpness. We would expect our height of contours to be very close to the incisal. We would expect our cervical line to come closest to the apical portion of the tooth right in the center of the labial surface. If we were to look to our lateral, it would be contacting rather high or rather close to the incisal, we should say, on our central. And on the distal, we'd have a rounded distal incisal angle. Actually, our crown length should be a little bit longer than what our central is if we were drawing them together. And our root, if anything, may have just a little bit of a distal swing to it. We would anticipate that we would have a somewhat of a concavity at the outline form on the labial here, right at the cervical on the distal leaving our tooth just about a half millimeter wider towards the distal and having this distal surface uh, uh, protrude out a little bit further from the central than uh, a portion of the tooth and what it does on the mesial. Mesial is quite symmetrical, but this distal uh, starts to turn the corner and starts to get a little larger here, our line angle being more rounded. We can identify a couple, review a couple other terms that we discussed. One is our proximal surfaces, both of these surfaces uh, in between here, the distal mesial surface of the lateral, as well as the distal surface of the central could be termed proximal surface. That gives our area and space in between here an interproximal term. If we're talking about uh, decay that occurs in between here or our gingival tissue, or bone, what have you, interproximal area. This also uh, gives us an opportunity to define our embrasure. Now this isn't a very big embrasure because we got a very, well, a contact that's very close to the incisal edge here. But the V-shaped space between our contact area and the incisal edges, which is a, a small one in this particular tooth, smaller than practically any other tooth in the mouth, really, is called our embrasure. Let's take a look at the mesial view on our mandibular central. several things we would expect to identify on this. We don't want a, a large cingulum on this tooth. It's a fairly small cingulum. The concavity is not real sharp or great. The incisal edge is generally located over the center of the apex. And our cervical line 
curves closest to the incisal edge, right in the mid portion of the tooth. If we look at the maxillary incisor as it relates to our mandibular, we'd find some additional relationships that we could point out here. And this is in relation to our overbite and overjet. And the distance that we have, let me get a, a red pencil here, maybe. The distance we have from our labial surface of our mandibular incisor to our incisal edge of our maxillary is our horizontal overbite or overlap. And this is called our overjet or horizontal overlap. And then we have an additional term which we want to become familiar with, and this is the distance in which they actually lap vertically, our vertical overlap. Or sometimes this distance here is called our overbite, which is a term that we must become familiar with. They show a little bit better diagrammic, diagrammatically than they probably did in the skull for you. Let's take a, root, a look at the cross sections of these roots. If you remember, on our maxillary central, we had basically a triangular shaped root on it, which would give us a cross section which would be quite triangular. And again, our pulp would have a tendency to be similarly triangular. Let's look back at these views that we made here. Actually, when we're taking a cross section, we're just taking a cross section right through around the cervical third of the tooth, in which we're looking at these sections in this area. Our maxillary central is going to be triangular. Our maxillary lateral is more of a, what we call, egg-shaped or oval, being broadest again towards the labial because this is where our uh, arch is the widest. And of course, our pulp canal in here will be similar in shape. But when we look to our mandibular, we find that uh, this is significantly different. We're rather broad from the labial lingual dimension, and we end up with what is called a flat-shaped root on it. And our root canal on it would be also flat-shaped. Fact is, many times these roots will have a tendency to have this concavity, and they're oftentimes called bow-shaped or ribbon-shaped. But again, if anything, they'll be a little bit broader out towards the labial aspect of it. Occasionally, we'll develop into two separate root canals on this tooth, but generally we've got the broad, flat uh, chamber and broad, flat canal, which makes for some difficulty in instrumentation and uh, endodontic procedures. But the differences in the root shapes are very significant in these four incisor teeth, maxillary and mandibular, and we would expect you to be able to know and identify the different shapes as well as the shapes of their uh, pulp cavities. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.